Biden administration is making another attempt to forgive student loans for nearly 30 million borrowers. On Monday, President Biden unveiled his latest plan that would grant relief to student debtors, a cornerstone of his 2020 campaign. Now, the president made the announcement in Wisconsin. Let's listen. Today, too many Americans, especially young people, are saddled with unsustainable debts in exchange for a college degree. The ability for working and middle class folks to repay their student loans has become so burdensome that a lot can't repay it for even decades after being in school. And I mean that sincerely, and many of you know that sitting in front of me. Even when they work hard and pay their student loans, their debt increases, not diminishes. Too many people feel the strain and stress, wondering if they're going to can get married, have their first child, start a family, because even if they get by, they still have this crushing, crushing debt. The revised version would not cancel student loans. Instead, it would cancel runaway interest, which is the crux of debt for many students. Biden's newest iteration of student loan relief follows the first failed plan, which the Supreme Court struck down. Uh, that would have wiped up to $20,000 in debt for about 43 million eligible borrowers. While Washington dukes it out over student loan policy, costs are skyrocketing, with Vanderbilt University gaining the dubious distinction of being the first university to charge $100,000 a year. But according to New the New York Times, the university maintains that most pupils will not pay nearly that much. Only 35% will pay full price. Other schools also say the same after discounts and aid are applied. Regardless of whether students end up having to pay that much, it could end up sidelining those who are lower income, who don't know that uh, they likely have access to lower tuition costs. We reached out to Vanderbilt for comment, but have not heard back. So the politics of this are fascinating. Biden's choice to announce this in Wisconsin, where there, the uncommitted vote there just doubled uh, the number of votes by which Biden won narrowly over Donald Trump in 2020, and the number of votes by which Hillary lost to Donald Trump in 2016. So both of those margins were around 21, 22, low 20 thousands of, of votes. And the uncommitted vote got 47,000 votes. It's a lot of college towns, a lot of young people there, a lot of people who are very uh, disgruntled with his foreign policy, among other things. So the choice to say, hey, I'm, a, I'm announcing a 30 million dollar, a 30 million student plan or 30 million borrowers will be implicated by this plan is to seems to be a kind of a, a cope. Um, however, it's worth noting the original student debt plan was supposed to uh, accommodate 44 million voters. Again, remember, it was going to cancel 10 to $20,000 debt of uh, student debt. Uh, depending on your eligibility requirements. This 30,000, uh, 30 million voter number is admittedly, by their own admission, li likely to double count by a great deal. And I think we should not take that uh, very seriously, take it with a grain of salt, because the people who are eligible again, uh, under different parts of the program, which we should talk about what those constituent parts are, what this program actually provides for, often are implicated by the other parts. So if you are doing a public ser a service loan forgiveness, which is a pre-existing program that he's counting toward this, then you might also be someone who has really high interest rates that have been accumulating over the course. Definitionally, you are someone who has high interest rates that have been accumulating over the course of 10, 20, 30 years, and a lot of the other provisions in this program. This, so politically speaking, this very much feels like Biden does this routinely to you know, put a little bit of yeah. cheese on a string right. and say, will you run through this wheel, mice, please vote for me. Um, I don't know if you know, your kind of skepticism of this at this point is broadly representative of young people and progressive people. It probably is. So I don't know how much this is doing for him. Um, obviously, policy-wise, you know, we've argued about this a lot. I actually think we had some of our most bitter arguments prior to Israel becoming a daily conversation topic for us on this subject. I'm, you know, totally against forgiving any of this debt. But it's just, and it always strikes me to hear him say, to treat this policy like, like it is so bad. Like, oh, we have all these young people, and I agree, we have all these young people saddled with debt. Um, the, many of them who are in the worst shape are, are people who did not complete the college degree, who took on the debt mm -hmm. and didn't even get the boon at the end. Um, describing this as a sort of policy failure, but it is a federal policy to loan this, to put people in this, to provide this service where people borrow money to go to college, which we all understand and multiple studies have shown has the effect of dramatically, has had the effect of the last 30 years of dramatically 
causing tuition prices to rise as the as the colleges themselves realize they can charge whatever they want. They can they can rate as Vanderbilt University is going hundred thousand dollars now. They can charge more because the price of it is confused for the person buying it because the person buying it takes out a loan from the government and is paying it back later in installments plus massive interest. The whole system seems totally totally designed actually to ju just in the college's favor because it's allowing them to raise prices astronomically. So I don't see, and I said this when the last student debt policy was proposed, I wrote about this, I don't see how you can describe this policy or say we should keep this policy, we should keep doing this with the consequence of the price going way out of whack and say, oh, but also it's a massive policy failure because we have all these people in debt. Yeah, I agree. That's why we should have free public uh, colleges, uh, free public education, and why it was so horrible that Ronald Reagan and the Republicans uh, had a war on public education in the 80s. If we did, we wouldn't be in this situation. So I completely well, agree. Well, that would raise, so, that would dramatically, that would be the same thing. That would they, If, if it's oh, free, if it's the government is paying the entire cost of the education, whatever it is, then they would dramatically no, it, raise it the prices. Because right now, and I'll get to this, because I think it's important to actually cover what the policies are before we get into a debate about whether or not we just agree in, with student debt at all. I mean, we should cover the story here. But the the it is much cheaper just to pay without the interest rate the cost of an education and to get rid of the bloat, if you will, whether it's colleges spending on um, stadiums and other kinds of things that aren't about educating the public, than to pay uh, this loan where the banks are making money hand over fist on these interest amounts. So let's well, the get to- the government's making money hand let's, over fist. Let's, Let's make yes. let's let's talk about um, what's going on here because it's not just the government; it's private loans, and that's part of what's going on here. So the the relief is falling into several buckets. Um, one of the buckets that I'm reading this really interesting, a really useful uh, explainer from the American Prospect. So what's important to know about this is that Joe Biden is claiming to be doing a lot of things that are new here, but a lot of it is that he's just simply. Uh, enacting the policies, following through on the policies that have already been passed by Congress, including by Republicans in Congress. So, for example, um, there are people who saw their schools close or promised a useful diploma for obtaining employment that proved to be worthless. This is like the people who were um, given forgiveness who went to Corinthian colleges. I don't know if you remember that settlement. Those, to me, seem to be a very meritorious group of people who deserve um, to get their money back, to not be indebted for the rest of their life when they were defrauded. Um, but again, this is not a new Biden policy. This is just enforcing policies that exist. Well, they get it back from the institution. Um, the institution Rather doesn't have, have, the, have the money. Well, <laughs> um, uh, There are the people who have been en enrolled in the uh, federal loan forgiveness program, which says that if you are working a public interest job, the kind of jobs that we want, kids to go to med school, to go back to their communities, not being burdened by such high medical school debt, that they have to go and be a plastic surgeon in San Francisco, that instead they can go back to their community in Des Moines and actually provide good medical service to these communities that have so few doctors and so few hospitals and have these staffing issues. Lawyers who can go back home to their communities and be public defenders and the like. Um, those people have their first, the, the, the tenure, the first kind of like, um, in point of the program was supposed to be in 2017, where they were supposed to have their debts forgiven. And uh, Donald Trump, under his administration, forgave almost none of that debt, completely reneged on the promise. So again, a big chunk of these people are just Biden fulfilling the promise that had already been extended to those borrowers. There is a batch of forgiveness that's to people who've become totally and permanently disabled after taking out loans. That's about uh, half a million borrowers and on and on and on. So before I think we start criticizing this as somehow a giveaway to people who aren't merited, we should look at those segments of human beings that are implicated, not to mention that a big part of this program is about interest. So the administration is proposing to cancel up to $20,000 in interest charges, acknowledging what a big um, obstacle to repayment, not the principal is, but the fact that if you have a $100,000 loan at an 8% interest rate, you're very quickly in a realm where over 10 or 20 years, you're paying back more in interest than you ever did in the principal. And I did a quick calculator for myself. I had the full amount of loans from law school, $160,000 a year. A 10 Over a 10-year term, I was paying $2,300 a month for my loans. The interest calculator at an 8% interest rate the interest uh, calculator had me paying 58% principal, 42% interest, $116,000 of interest on a loan that was only $160,000 to begin with. Yeah, I understand why it's a massive risk to take out this amount of money, and I don't think this government program to incentivize, to subsidize people engaging in incredible risk, because if you don't, right, if something goes wrong, like you said, disabled people or the institution closing or you not finishing your degree and being, it seems like a bad program and we should just 
get rid of that. I mean, if we, we could cancel all the debt and we back to the same number it was um, within a few years because the costs are continuing to skyrocket and we're still offering the program. Well, I agree. That's why we should have free uh, public college and universities. And that's no, why I think- No, not free, but they should set the price. And that's, if it's a public institution- I, I, the, I really appreciate the, that the that's price your point. Could be but set if I could just the, make the point that I'm making. Okay, and then I will make the point I'm going to make. Go ahead. That is why I think the Bernie plan, which which put together the idea of student debt cancellation and free public colleges and universities was so important because it really cut against this argument that I think is really intuitive for a lot of people and I don't think is wrong. They want to know, fine, if we bail people out this time, what's going to happen the next time around? I don't think that's an unreasonable concern or a reasonable question to ask. But that is why Democrats, unlike independent Bernie Sanders, Democrats constantly means testing programs and constantly going only half, halfway or a fraction of the way end up damning themselves in the long run. That's all I was going to say. Yeah, I would just add that I think the beneficiary of a college degree is primarily the person who gets it and it should be they should pay for it but it should be afford it's totally unaffordable now it used to be affordable it used to be able to you could actually work odd jobs you could work summer job a night job and pay for college yourself you absolutely can't do that now I understand that and we need to go back to the system where you could actually do that and that would involve public institutions I have no problem with the government setting the price of those kinds of things to make what the taxpayer I'm from Michigan I went to the University of Michigan the taxpayers of Michigan support the University of Michigan it should absolutely be affordable to the people who reside in that state and I would be happy to see public policy along those lines. If I could just before we wrap, I just really do want to make sure we cover the actual issue here. So borrowers who are watching who want to know if they're eligible for this this is what the, what the interest thing is. Um, the administration is proposing to cancel up to $20,000 in interest charges. Individual borrowers who earn $120,000 or less and married couples who make $240,000 or less are eligible for forgiveness of the entire amount that their loan balance has increased beyond the principal. So again, if you took out the sums of money and you earn below those income thresholds, again, these aren't super successful surgeons and things like that who are above the income threshold. Most people who are getting the benefit of the degree are not going to... Um, qualify. But for those who, in fact, are not uh, are below those income thresholds, it's at least going to put some cap on your, uh, on your interest payments over the long haul. Mm -hmm. All right, stick around. We're rising for you after this.